Hey professors, welcome back to my channel and congratulations on surviving my previous video if you watched it. And if you didn't, then that's basically where we covered Ali's regrettable rise to fame. And usually I would tell you guys to go check it out, but honestly, if you already know that part of the story, then j just spare yourself the suffering because you're gonna need that strength to get through this video. Anyways, today we're gonna be continuing on part two of our series on Ollie London because whilst he's always been known as that crazy Korea boo fan who got tons of plastic surgery to look like BTS member Jimin, that was in fact just the first in his long line of transformations, with him eventually going on to identify as transracial Korean, coming out as a transgender woman, and most recently, becoming, <laughs> you're not gonna believe this, a Christian conservative politician. And they think it's normal to have a sex change. They think that's completely normal, when it really isn't. Guys, <laughs> you honestly can't make this stuff up. But yeah, we're gonna be covering all of that in this video. Video. So buckle up and prepare yourselves because it's gonna be a wild ride. But before we jump into that disaster, I wanted to tell you guys about an app that has been very useful for me and would have definitely been super useful for Opa Olieyo. That's right guys, it's today's sponsor, Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone is a language learning app with courses for over 24 different languages. And Rosetta Stone has been one of the most useful tools in my language learning journey. What I really love about this app is that it doesn't just focus on reading and writing, but it also helps you with your listening. 일본 식당. And it uses its true accent technology to help you with your pronunciation and your speaking. And I just think this feature is so useful because I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to like my Korean, for example, speaking is an area that I just really struggle with because it's not something that you can really practice with traditional learning materials like textbooks. But thanks to Rosetta Stone, I see myself improving and becoming just a bit more confident each day, which is so important if you actually want to go out in the world and use the language in real life. And there's perhaps no better time to check out Rosetta Stone than now, because they're currently offering all of you viewers an exclusive discount of just $179 for an unlimited lifetime subscription. And with Christmas right around the corner, I just think this could be the perfect gift for you or any of your friends and family who might be looking to learn a new language. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. Be sure to check it out and huge thanks once again to Rosetta Stone for sponsoring this video. Okay, so where we last left off, Ollie was already super infamous within the K-pop community, had gotten almost $200,000 worth of plastic surgery, and had just ended his year of 2020 by getting into a feud with fellow pseudo K-pop act Kachi after they cut ties with him in an attempt to save their own reputations. And as we all know, this led to Ollie going on a full-out tirade against the group, accusing them of having bad personalities and using him to get on TV. They have no star quality whatsoever. They're super, super boring. Coco's sweet, but the rest, they they don't have the charisma. They were never stars in the first place. They never will be. I've just done all this for you. I've just made you. I've got you in the press, got you 10 million views in the music video, got you a TV show, and that's how you thank me. But while the experience definitely hurt Ollie's ego, it barely made a dent in his wallet. Because the truth is, Ollie didn't actually need Kachi to stay relevant, something that was obviously proven by the release of his next single, Korea Boo. You, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? All eyes on Ollie in the club. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Hey, you, what you gonna do? Scream and shout, there's no doubt. Korea Boo is coming for you. What you gonna do? This atrocity of a single somehow managed to make it to number 6 on the iTunes charts, becoming Ollie's highest charting single to date, and you're not gonna believe this, beating out top K-pop acts like Psy, Blackpink, and Ollie's very own idols, BTS. Nani? 
But celebrations didn't exactly last for long because soon even being a career boo wasn't quite enough for Ollie. No, he wanted to be an actual Korean. In June of 2021, Pride Month was turned on its head when Ollie came out with the shocking announcement that not only was he coming out as gender non-binary, but also as a transracial Korean person. I am coming out as non-binary um, and my pronouns are they, them, Korean Jimin because I know a lot of people don't understand me but I do identify as Korean. In a video titled Being Korean, Ollie revealed that he had gotten quote racial transition surgery in the form of a facelift. I finally had the courage. I've undergone my um, racial, uh, can't think of the word, transitional surgery. As you know, I identify with the Korean culture. Um, I've lived in Korea, I speak the language, I have the Korean look now, I look completely Korean. No offense, but you barely even look human, Ali, let alone Korean. Needless to say, this announcement caused quite a stir, allowing Ali to generate an alleged 50 million Google search results within just mid-2021 alone. For the first time ever, Ali's publicity stunts had extended past the K-pop circle and into mainstream culture involving multiple groups of people including the LGBTQ plus community who felt like Ollie was taking advantage of their struggles and ridiculing their cause. You are invalidating other non-binary experiences by almost parodying the non-binary experience. Ollie's irresponsibility, intentionally or not, is feeding conservatives ammunition to invalidate trans identities. And indeed, these fears proved to be true when Ollie found himself in an ironic alliance with, believe it or not, the American Conservative Party. Trans Koreans are Koreans. What's making you so mad, bro? Hmm? Hmm? Bigotry? Ollie London is just as Korean as Caitlyn Jenner is a woman. In an enemy of an enemy is a friend sort of way, conservative commentators sarcastically rejoiced and celebrated Ollie's coming out video, jumping at the chance to use him, or rather Core slash Ian, to highlight what they believed was the absurdity of the transgender cause. Now, you're gonna have to explain to me why Ollie London is not a Korean. Really, and if you say things like, well, Ollie London has never been Korean. Yes, but trans women are not women. There are zero distinctions, none, between being trans Korean and being a trans person of another sex. None. And this, as we will come to find out, would actually mark the beginnings of all these close ties to the conservative party and the anti-trans movement. But that will come back into the story later. Aside from being at the center of the LGBTQ versus conservative debate though, Ali was also a huge talking point within the Asian community. Firstly because, I mean, to imply that Koreans look anything like that honestly feels kind of like an insult. But also because Ali would then go on to offend even more Asians when he appeared on the show Being British East Asian in October of 2021, during which he argued that Korean, Chinese, and Kazakhstani people were essentially doing the same thing as him by quote, trying to look more Western. With all the cases, it's the other way around because normally Asian people, they do the surgery to get that as a Caucasian side one. I know that lots of Western people think that Asian people want to get these surgeries to look more Western or look more white. Not really. Why would Asian person change their features? For example, I. It's not problem. It's not aged. They want to change their shape. Therefore, they want to look like a different race, isn't it? Mm. Otherwise, why would they do it? The features some people like to get in Asia they will show the doctor, I want to look like this, and they get their beauty ideals from fashion magazines because if you go to China, I've lived in Korea for a year, I've been to China, I've been all over Asia, Kazakhstan, everywhere you go is Western beauty ideals are indoctrinated. So that's what people are looking at these days as a symbol of beauty. And it's, and you know, it's sad that people want to change because they've seen a magazine, but that's unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Well, the solution to that is simple, isn't it? All they have to do is take a good look at you, Ollie, and I can guarantee that no Asian would ever want to look Western again. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, maybe that was a bit mean, but seriously though, while I might agree with some of what was being said, the fact that Ollie London of all Caucasians is making such a statement is just beyond ironic. And while I do want to keep this video relatively light, I also think it's super important to acknowledge that many of these quote, Western-inspired beauty standards in Asia actually stems from the discrimination that Asians face for their ethnic features. So for Ali to equate this to his situation, you know, it's, it's touching on the sore point for many Asian people. Maybe that's why the reporter ended up getting so offended that she actually ran off set halfway through filming. But if all that wasn't already insulting enough to the Asian community, in January of 2022, Ali announced that he would be getting a penis reduction surgery as part of his racial transition. In an interview with Newsweek, he opened up about his reasons for getting the procedure, saying, I don't want people to get offended by this, but in Korea, the average penis is like 3.5 inches, and I just want to be 100% Korean. I would even have a penis reduction surgery so unlike the Korean average. That's how far I'm willing to go. Look, I personally have no experience in this area, but even a simple Google search would show that the average Korean size is in fact 5.2 inches, not 3.5. Guess it has been slim pickings for Ollie when it comes to his Korean men. And indeed, it seems even cardboard Jimin wants it out of his relationship with Ollie. Because in February of 2022, Ollie announced that the pair would be getting a divorce after two years of tumultuous marriage. We have actually filed the documents in the UK court for divorce. So me and Jimin, we will get divorced. Um, you know, I'm citing irreconcilable differences or whatever you call it. And I've been thinking, you know, maybe everything people say is true. Maybe I shouldn't be married to a couple with Jimin. Maybe I'm being selfish. Maybe I'm selfish, you know, I'm keeping Kabul Jimin to myself when the whole army loves Jimin. Um, I don't think anyone really wants to share cardboard Jimin now that it's got Ollie slobber all over it. You can keep that to yourself, Ollie. And another thing Ollie should have probably kept to himself were his atrocious attempts to quote audition for various K-pop companies. Starting of course with BTS's company Hybe. In late 2021, Ollie released this awful rendition of BTS's song Butter. Smooth like butter, like a criminal undercover. God, pop like trouble, breaking into your heart like that. Honestly, the song has never sounded the same again since. This was followed up by Ollie's audition for another major K pop company, YG Entertainment. And this time, he butchered Blackpink's song, How You Like That. Blackpink, if you didn't know, is pretty much the most popular K pop girl group, and what many would consider the female equivalent of BTS with both groups breaking records, topping the charts, and achieving massive success worldwide. But there was about to be another thing that these two groups would share in common. That's right guys, they both became victims of Ollie London. Shortly after releasing the How You Like That cover, it seems Ollie switched targets, setting his sights on Blackpink instead, and more specifically, their main vocalist Rosé. On the 7th of May, Ollie officially came out as a transgender woman, identifying as Rosé London. Essentially, he tried to pull the gym in stunt all over again, getting 8 additional plastic surgery procedures to look more like Rosé, and even marrying this dude called Danny, who was apparently getting plastic surgery to look like Jimin. However, at this point, the whole impersonating an idol shtick was getting kind of old, and people were slowly beginning to lose interest. It seemed like at long last, Ollie had run out of ideas to outdo himself after that whole transracial saga, and it was now just a matter of time before he finally faded into obscurity. Hey everyone, what's up? It's Ollie. Or so we thought. In October of 2022, Ollie managed to surprise us all once again with what was perhaps his most unexpected move yet, becoming a Christian conservative. It all started with this Twitter announcement by Ollie proclaiming that he had recently found Christ. 
And following this, Ali also decided to detransition. I've come to realize that actually I am a man and I want to stay as a man. So I'm going to revert to my original pronouns, which is he, him and call Ian. Oh, why? You were doing just fine until you said that. But that's right, guys. Ali is still transracial, just not transgender. And in line with his newfound masculinity and Christian beliefs, Ali has also joined the Republican Party. Now, if you recall, they previously supported him through his racial transition. And it appears Ali has decided to repay the favor, appearing on right-wing stations like Fox News and presenting himself almost as if he was like a former victim of the transgender movement. Now kids are being pushed this radical ideology. They're taught to idolize weak men like Harry Styles, weak politicians like Beto O'Rourke. Why is this happening, you know? And is it any wonder people like me fall victim to this, that I had all this surgery, I tried to change, because, you know, I, I kind of fell victim to this mentality. Since then, Ollie has managed to somewhat carve out a niche for himself in the conservative sphere, primarily speaking on issues related to the transgender community. I feel that the transgender community have had four years to prepare for the midterm elections, you know, why is it one week before the election they're suddenly, you know, complaining and say, you know, we're getting attacked, we're getting, you know, intimidated, which is not true. And speaking out against what he calls woke culture. The fact that people try to call me racist or cultural appropriating, I just think is just crazy. It just shows how the wokeness has just gone absolutely mad. It's like, I'm not doing anything harmful. The Korean people actually think it's really sweet what I do. I'm appreciating their culture. So yeah, that's where the story ends for now. Obviously, this is causing a lot of disappointment and concern within the LGBTQ community, with many now claiming that he's betraying his own kind and fighting against his own people. And while I understand where they're coming from, what I think everyone is forgetting is that Ali can't actually betray his own kind because he doesn't have a kind. I mean, based on his history so far, Ali is clearly a troll who's willing to switch up his entire identity all for some attention and a quick buck. So is it even really that surprising that he was willing to abandon the trans community as soon as it stopped serving his purpose? In fact, if we really think about it, we don't even know if Ali was ever even that serious about actually being trans, or about being a BTS fan, or about any of his other personas for that matter. And for all we know, even this God-fearing conservative identity could very well be yet another one of his many phases. So just consider that your warning, Fox News. Who's Ollie London? It's called Ollie. Ollie London, an influencer and pop superstar. Ollie London joins us. Tonight. Okay, editing me here. So despite claiming that he is now a changed man who regrets his past, Ollie uploaded a show reel just hours ago, which literally features a bunch of clips from all his past eras. Honestly, if this doesn't prove that his new conservative image isn't all a sham, then I don't know what will. Ultimately, Ollie's true personality and identity very much remains a mystery. I guess the only thing we really know is that behind his ridiculous facade, he is clearly an intelligent and scheming individual who knows how to use cancel culture to his advantage, allowing him to achieve way greater accomplishments than other more talented and arguably more deserving people in the entertainment industry. And as much as you or I may disagree with his actions, we can't deny that they have clearly worked in his favor as proven by his massive following. In many ways, Ollie's success exemplifies the worst of social media culture, demonstrating how people often pay far more attention to the negative or the bad compared to the positive, which honestly is just such a pity. Uh, but, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures, and considering my depressing YouTube stats lately, maybe it's time I actually need to start learning a thing or two from Ollie London himself. Hey you, what you gotta do? What you gotta do? All eyes on Ploopy in the club, what you gotta do? What you gotta do? All eyes on Ploopy in the club, what you gotta do? 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 Hey you, what you gotta do? Blue P is coming for you. Hey you, what you gotta do? Like, subscribe, join the tribe. You're not gonna want another one of these horrible covers. So please subscribe and I'll not do another.
Snoopy ain't no Hey you, what you gotta do? Press like and please subscribe Hey you, what you gotta do? What you gotta do? What you gotta do? Hey you, what you gotta do? Press like and please subscribe Hey you, what you gotta do? What you gotta do? What you gotta do?